So around 11 o'clock this morning, we were all shocked when we went to Instagram to check out stories from our most favorite people that we follow yep. that we couldn't get on Instagram. And then I said, damn, what's going on? And I went to WhatsApp to go text yeah. my friend. Hey, you having a problem with Instagram? I said, damn, WhatsApp too. <laughs> That's no good. That's no good. That was bad. So then I went to the old fashioned messenger on Facebook. Ah. And I said, damn, it doesn't work either. either. Yeah. Now, at the same exact time as this was happening, a Facebook employee, she was a whistleblower, 37 year old Francis Huggin, former Facebook product manager. She was coming clean on 60, uh, 60 minutes. minutes. She's coming clean on what's going on at Facebook right now. Mm. And what's going on at Facebook is that they are more interested in money than truth. And they are very well aware, according to this whistleblower, that there are a lot of posts that are causing division, lies, untruths, social upheaval. And the reason that they're doing it is to keep eyes on Facebook that they mm. don't want people to log out of Facebook. It's not just clicking through to ads, it's keeping eyes logged on to Facebook. Mm. The more people are logged into Facebook, the more time they spend on Facebook, the more money Facebook will make. Mm. So their ultimate goal is eyes on Facebook more than whether anything that is on Facebook is truthful, not truthful, is spreading lies, is spreading truths, is causing upheaval, is causing divisiveness. Because if everything was not divisive, I don't think people would spend as much time, just human nature. You wouldn't be commenting, you wouldn't be Absolutely. saying things, you wouldn't be getting yourself upset and then going to look for something else. Yeah. You would just be like, oh, nice picture of a dog. Yeah. Right? Yep. Like Fuzzy Monday. Yep. So it seems to be that that is their model in causing upheaval and divisiveness rather than bringing people together, which is what you would think social media is. That's at least from the whistleblower's perspective. We have video of her, let's watch. There were conflicts of interest between what was good for the public and what was good for Facebook. And Facebook over and over again chose to optimize for its own interests, like making more money. Exactly. Mm -hmm. What do you think of all of this? Oof. I can't say too much of what I do know, but I do know some people that do work for Facebook and I've heard this before this whistleblower came out. It's almost like deja vu because I've heard the same thing she has said. And it's to the point where, you know, a lot of the Facebook workers, they're feeling bad. They're feeling like they're becoming a sellout because of what they have to do for work. And it conflicts what they truly believe you know, to yeah. be their Mother Teresa in their heart. Yeah. So, um, I think yeah. in the last two years with Facebook ads, I mean, I see it all the time when I work with a bunch of different people. It's huge. Like, there's just about no business out there that is not marketing on Facebook and right. is not connecting or, or monetizing or doing something with Facebook. So I think they know exactly what they have on their hands. They know how powerful they are. Now, one of the things that the whistleblower came out and said is that Facebook was trying to figure out how to get teens and children more interested in social media apps, specifically Facebook, because, you know, Facebook is, at least certainly in the United States, maybe in other countries different, is for older people. Facebook started off as an app where you had to have a college login. I had to have a college login right. or email in order to get Access on Facebook. Facebook. <laughs> maybe Facebook realizes they're overreaching now, perhaps. You know, I've been reading articles that are arguing that because they need to try to make themselves cool for children, they're losing the next generation, teenagers, young adults, that maybe there won't be Facebook. Maybe Facebook is gonna be like MySpace in 10 years from oh, now. Oh, wow. Right, right. You know, if certainly, they mess up. certainly in the United States when other cooler apps, interestingly enough, as all of this is coming out, Facebook lost connectivity, not only Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, and also their Oculus, their 3D, you know, thing. All lost connectivity, not locally within certain cities, not within the United States of America, globally, global, mm -hmm. That's global a global shutdown. Now, 
I am no technical genius by any stretch of the imagination. Anyone who knows, who works at Bradshaw Live, knows that when something goes wrong, I am the last person to get under the desk and try to figure out what wires got to be connected. But I do have some common sense. And my common sense is this. I don't know what's going to happen, but my common sense is this. If it was like a switch, we were talking about this right before we got on the air. If it was like a switch or a computer malfunction, you know, yeah. Facebook or Instagram or WhatsApp, it would have been down in certain areas around the continent. Major cities. Major cities. But to have a global shutdown, there is no one switch anywhere on the internet right. that could shut down a huge, a huge That's social, fun. you know, one of the most powerful, if not the most powerful, tech, you know, uh, tech, tech company in, in the world. So this, and I am just saying this, I have no idea. I am not, I am not saying this as fact. I'm saying this as hashtag conjecture. <laughs> I think it was a hack. Mm. Yeah. It mm -hmm. could be. I think it was it a It went on for it's way too long. And again, you're right. Like, globally, like, globally, let's say something would have just globally. Right. happened in New York or the tri-state area. No, There's no, definitely no. a lot of conspiracy theories out there. You, I, have you read any today? Um, I've, I've read a couple. I've read one where, you know, because I actually was talking to my friends who do work at Facebook, and uh, I know that they have... They're going to, like we said, like Capitol Hill tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So some people were like, well, maybe they shut it down themselves so they can clean house. You know, you oh, never sure know. Enough. It's now, a lot. Now, at 1 o'clock, Cisco's Internet an Analysis Division, Thousand Eyes, said on Twitter that its tests indicate the outage was due to an ongoing DNS failure. Now, it, maybe it was a DNS mm. failure. That's kind of like the phone book of the Internet. It keeps all the IP addresses but perhaps that was where the hack was. Hmm. I'm not saying it wasn't a DNS failure. I'm just saying, again, I am. I, I never heard the word DNS before. I just said it five minutes ago. <laughs> uh, my, but I. But to me, it just seems. So my, it, it, whatever it is, it has to be super serious because yeah. the people that I know that work at Facebook had no idea why. So this is. These are internal people that work that within the know. company and Oof. they would have told me the i know for a fact they would have told me told you. We like told you. why it's shut down they, they don't said know they don't know meanwhile so. what's very interesting is that they couldn't even get into their own buildings yeah all right Feels so some good tuesday tea so yeah. that was <laughs> yeah. that was more than just a d uh, uh a dns hack yeah okay because the dns and i assume has nothing to do with their key cards right to get into buildings and that's been reported as well by the news too. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Just hope no one crazy is coming for us. I don't right. Know. It's 2021. I, I don't, don't know, know anything can happen. I don't know anything can happen, right? <laughs> Meanwhile, the other big news is we're still waiting for the $3.5 trillion budget reconciliation deal to pass. We're waiting for the $1.2 trillion infrastructure deal to pass. And it's been reported that the parliamentarian has said no to both plans A and B. We are not aware of any plan C yet. That would be a substantial help for immigrants. Maybe there will be some minor adjustments for immigration in the final bills, but certainly not a full on amnesty plan or a plan that would help millions and millions of deserving people. With that said, Senator Kristen Sinema, she is the Arizona senator. She and Senator Manchin, those are the two big holdouts in the Senate on the Democratic side. They need all 50 votes to pass the reconciliation bill. A video posted on the Twitter account of Living United for Change in Arizona, which is an immigration reform advocacy group, shows activists following Senator Cinema on her way out of a classroom and into a bathroom. A woman mm -hmm. filming the encounter who identifies herself as Blanca is heard saying after the senator enters a stall, we knocked on doors for you to get you elected and just how we got you elected, we can get you out of office if you don't support what you promised us, which was oh, wow. referencing immigration. Let's watch your video. I'm a survivor of human trafficking and it's because of the lack of worker protections that we don't have in the gay economy. I need you to stand by workers. 
Yeah, bold. Wow. Now, yeah, now, seriously. Now, now, I want you to know, she's holding up the $3.5 trillion budget reconciliation deal, her and Senator Joe Manchin. But that deal is going to go on without immigration. And I boldly, I boldly applaud Blanca, who yeah. herself is fighting to get her family reunited here. Uh. And it was a very, very bold move. She needs to find a parliamentarian yeah. in the bathroom. You know, she went after Senator Cinema, and by all means, I'm glad that we are getting the word out. But the woman who's holding everything up is that parliamentarian. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lucha told the Arizona Republic in the email yesterday, Lucha is the Living United for Change in Arizona. That's where this Twitter account, where the video came from, said it has required a tremendous amount of bravery from this young organizer to fight for her family and tell her story to her senator. Cinema has denied our requests, ignored our phone calls, and closed her office to her constituents. She hasn't had a public event or town hall in years. No one wants to meet with their senator in the restroom. I like that organization. Lucha means fight in Spanish, so that's why they mm. have the wrestlers as the icon. That's super cute. Oh, that's dope. Yep. Yeah. According to Lucha, she's the one blocking a path to citizenship, deportation protection, paid family care, climate justice, lower drug costs, and so many other things we need. Many yes she is blocking. But she's not the one blocking the immigration. Right. It's the, the parliamentarian. parliamentarian. Did you see the oil spill in California? No. It's no. very trifling. Yes, 126,000 gallons of crude oil has exploded out oh. of an underwater uh, oil pipeline right off the coast of no. Newport Beach and Laguna Beach. Oh, wow. um, it is a 17 and a half mile pipeline and there is the 126,000 gallons of heavy crude uh, covers about 13 oh. and a half square miles. So it's not, all in the ocean now? All in the ocean. Not, oh not as big as the Exxon Valdez. Um, the Exxon Valdez, the famous you know, you know, oil spill up in Alaska, mm -hmm. but still extraordinarily big. Uh, people who live and work in the area oh. said they noticed the oil uh, and a heavy smell on Friday evening. That's when it first was discovered. I don't understand how nobody monitors the oil going under the water. Like nobody realizes right. this until somebody says, hey, there's oil on top of the water. But I guess that's what happens. Uh, the Coast Guard confirmed on Saturday afternoon that an oil slick had been spotted uh, uh, and established a unified command. Amplify Energy Corporation shut down operations of the pipeline and the platforms later that day. The company's CEO, Martin Wilshire, said the pipeline was suctioned out so no more oil would spill. But how do they not realize the oil is spilling to the ocean until somebody sees it? But this is just- Don't they like monitor these things? What is with maintenance all around everywhere? Why? I, I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand. We had the same conversations with the buildings down in Miami and yeah, like, where like, was the maintenance where, there? Yeah, exactly. Now by Sunday, booms were deployed on the water to try to contain the oil while divers sought to determine where exactly and why the leak occurred. Uh, they were able to remove 3,000 gallons of oil of the 126,000. <laughs> 3,000. Yeah, that's like, that's like uh, a pinky uh, nail. Right. Yeah. A pinky nail. A drip dry. A drip dry, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. But <laughs> residents, business owners, environmentalists question whether authorities had reacted quickly. That's what we're saying. See? This is so, uh, as if there aren't so many things already going on in the world. Global warming, like the earth needs us. Right. The earth really this does need us. This is setting back even more. Yeah, this is setting us back. Now, resident business owners, environmentalists question whether authorities reacted quickly. Gary Brown, president of the environmental group Orange County Coast Keeper, said by the time it comes to the beach, it's done tremendous damage. Our frustration is it could have been averted if there was a quick response. The other, <laughs> the other big question is why the hell are they drilling oil right off the coast of California, one of the biggest population centers in the United States of America? How did we not catch this before? A hundred thousand gallons. Isn't there like enough oil to like you know drill elsewhere? Why are they doing this right off the coast of California? So many questions, very little answers. <laughs> yeah, like Huntington Beach resident David Rapshin said he was worried about the impact of the spill on the beaches where he grew up as well as the local economy. He questioned whether drilling for oil was a wise idea along some of Southern California's most scenic beaches. We need the oil, but there's always a question, 
do we need to drill it there? Right. Yeah, there right. it goes. There, you just said that. Yeah. <laughs> there it goes. You know, I, I I'm, I'm asking beaches. the same question David Rapture's right. asking. I've been to these beaches growing up. So, you know, especially Laguna Beach, Huntington, Huntington Beach, all of these beaches. So, did um, you know they were drilling oil? I had no idea. That's what I'm saying. Meanwhile, uh, there was more than 660 different women's marches on Saturday. Yes. Yes, they were protesting the increasing state restrictions on abortion and advocating to maintaining a constitutional right to the procedure. Yep. Women's March Executive Director Rachel O'Leary Carmona said in addition to the Texas law, which we've talked about on our show, which basically has outlawed abortion after six weeks in the state of Texas, uh, there's a possibility that other states may pass similar legislation and a Mississippi challenge to the landmark Roe versus Wade decision ha could create an unprecedented attack on Roe versus Wade. We could, at the end of this year, have abortion uh, not a legal right in America anymore. And hmm. then it would be left to the individual states. So when Roe versus Wade, if it were to be overturned by this Mississippi by this Mississippi um, challenge. It would be up to the individual states whether or not to legalize abortion. Mm. Legalizing abortion is not, <clears throat> is, is what you're doing is saying, we are leaving it up to the pregnant woman to decide what to do mm. with her body. And I will tell you, uh, in the middle of the United States, where all those red states are during the Trump Biden election, mm -hmm. They'll all go to, yeah. um, you know, making abortions illegal. And then on either coast, where those blue states, where right. Biden won, it'll still be pro-choice. It'll be two different countries. Mm. If it happens. I can't tell you how much I really, like, can't believe that this is... Even on the, the table. Yeah, like. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, and not just because I'm a woman. It's, it's like experiences. Sometimes we speak about these topics really loosely, but it's not until like you experience something or you experience it happen to someone close to you. There's mm -hmm. just, especially with this topic, there's so many ways to go, go for it. Now, we were, Bradshaw Live was at a rally in New York. It drew thousands of protesters, including actresses Amy Schumer and Jennifer Lawrence. Is this, this is, this is, this was us there, oh, right? Oh, there they are. Yes. I love Amy life. Schumer. Me too. Yeah. I like now, that. My kitty, my biz. Now, yeah. Washington protesters marched the U.S. Supreme Court two days before the court reconvenes for a session in which the justices are going to hear the Mississippi case. It's actually going to be heard in two days from now. Oh, being heard December 1st. Mm. They reconvene today. Mm. Okay. It's being heard December 1st. All right. We'll see what happens. And we will stay tuned. Yes. Now, the United States has reported more than 43 million coronavirus cases, more than 701,000 deaths, but the deaths are starting to level off and go down. It may be because more people are getting vaccinated. It may be because the Delta variant has run its course. Mm. It may be, you know, just lots of prayers and love. <laughs> we don't know. But uh, according to the Department of Health and Human Services, there was a 12.7% decrease in hospitalizations compared to the week before. So that's, that's good very, news. That's very good news. That's good news. Julian. Something. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, like there we go. Like Something's lightening up. <laughs> now, while such declines are welcome, Dr. Jorge Rodriguez, a viral researcher and internal medicine physician said today, it does not signal the beginning of the end of this pandemic. Dr. Jorge Rodriguez, a little more pessimistic mm. than I us. know. He's totally not, messing up the vibe I'm right not, now. I'm not, I'm not saying it was the end of the pandemic. I'm just saying it was good news. It's, it's we we want to see yeah. these numbers going lower. We yeah, we like it going lower. We like it going lower. <laughs> now, in New York City, you know, a lot of this is also, you know, um, you know, the pandemic's going to depend on how many people are getting vaccinated and how many people have survived COVID and have the, you know, natural antibodies. In New York City, 148,000 people, part of the Board of Education, school teachers, principals, janitors, you know, cafeteria people who work in the cafeteria and everybody in between, you know, the secretaries in the back office, everybody at the Board of Education, it was mandated 
that they needed to have at least one COVID shot by today or they would be put on uh, unpaid leave until they did. Hmm. Now, according to the United Federation of Teachers Union President Michael Mulgrew, as a result, 97% of the New York City teachers now have at least received one dose of the COVID vaccine shot by this Monday. Uh, and the mayor of New York said 95% of all teachers and staff have been vaccinated. So, um, you know, a lot of people with these vaccination mandates, some people quit. Some mm -hmm. people quit their jobs. Absolutely. I know people who quit their jobs rather than take the vaccine. vaccine. Wow. But for the most part, 95, 97%, I think if the goal is to get as many people vaccinated and protect children in New York City School District, I think that was a good job. Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm, I'll be honest with you, I'm not a big fan of Mayor de Blasio, but good job there. Yeah. Right. Right. 95% of all teachers and staff, 97% of his union. United Airlines, very similar. They are mandating. You cannot work at United Airlines. Their entire, their entire fleet of people, oh, from wow. the baggage handler to oh, wow. the um, person at the ticket counter, to the pilot, to the uh, steward or stewardess, all, all must be vaccinated or they're going to lose their jobs. Ooh. And I think that's gonna happen more and more in the United States. And I think what's gonna happen is that other businesses and companies are gonna say, wait, New York City, right. you know, Board of Education, they did it. They mandatory. got 97% of their employees mm -hmm. vaccinated. United Airlines lost a few, but, but they're saying they're gonna get most of their employees vaccinated. And I think most businesses say, will say it is better to be, have a fully vaccinated staff to avoid people getting sick and to avoid customers concerned about, you know, um, doing business with your particular company. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, you don't want to walk into a business and say, am I going to get sick from COVID? Yeah. You don't want to walk on a so plane and say, I'm going to get sick. You don't want your child to go to school. Is my child going to get sick from their teacher? And I think most businesses will make the calculated business decision because it's all business decisions. Yes, you know, you want to keep people healthy, but it's all business decisions. Yeah. You know, in the end, saying, you know what? It's a better business decision to, to have a certainty of vaccination uh, and if we lose a few employees, then because they're going to, because you see, both United Airlines Nat, and now the Board of Education in New York City, they kept most of their employees. I think this is going to play out how anything else with the pandemic has. We just we just see how it goes. But I think that this will definitely help. Numbers keep dropping. Yes. yes. Schools, everyone's right. so right. close together. Now, right. now here we are, right? Right. See? Right. We're vaccinated. So We're back way in we studio. Be here. <laughs> the only way we could be here, right? Yeah. High yeah. five. <laughs> <laughs> Since we can now. High five. <laughs> so in Montreal, the Italian Greyhound from Montreal, Canada has become a fashion icon. His name is Tika the Iggy. Uh, Iggy is short for Italian Greyhound, and she has 782,000 TikTok followers, 711 followers on Instagram, just from being a cute dog. Hmm. And uh, uh, not just and cute, Tika, fashionable. And yeah. Tika's owner puts Tika in these different outfits. In fact, he has purchased more than 300 outfits Jeez. for Tika. Wow. Okay, Tika has a ward as her Tika's yeah. wardrobe is what one hundred times bigger than mine. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. even know if I have thirty outfits in my closet. People watch, I wear same. the same ten blazers. And then, you know, <laughs> they're in rotation. They're in rotation. I can't even get through a month without without rotating at least that once or twice. That was me with t-shirts back home. And Tika, oh, cool. and Tika the dog has a different outfit for all three hundred days of the year. Yeah. So uh, meanwhile, <laughs> Tika became really she blew up. Tika, at least in terms of being famous, she was famous before when Lizzo uh, posted a picture of her wearing a fur coat exactly like a Tika. fur coat 
that Tico was wearing, and then Lizzo posted the picture of her with Tico, I guess, side by side, uh. and, and then added the picture to her Instagram series in January, along with the line, swipe right to be seen by an actual bad bitch. Wow. <laughs> wow. Wow. wow, I love Lizzo. Now, I love now Shapiro was floored. He said, I love Lizzo. I love her as a person. I love her music. She's very much her own person. She does what she wants to the beat of her own drum, just like Tika. It's fun to have their worlds collide. <laughs> wow. We have a video. Let's see the video. In, now, this is Tika video. See this? I love it. I couldn't wear oh, it. Oh, I've seen love Tika. It. I know it. this. Then there's this. Love it. Couldn't wear it. Love it. Couldn't wear it. And this was supposed to be my cute costume, but no. <laughs> I know Tika. I've seen I've seen Tika. Yeah, I've seen him. I've yes. seen this. I've seen Tika. She hit 200,000 followers after Instagram featured her on its homepage. Things that went through the roof in December after Shapiro posted a TikTok video of Tika in various outfits. It has more than 32 million views. Can we see that video one more time? I love that video. Yeah, yeah. I actually like it. I, was I want to watch it. I had so many cute outfits planned for this year that I couldn't wear. So I just wanted to show you. <laughs> see this? I love it. I couldn't wear it. Love it. Couldn't wear it. Then there's this. Love it. Couldn't wear it. <laughs> love it. Couldn't wear it. And this was supposed to be my cute costume, but no. <laughs> I, I love, I love that I, I've seen this. Yeah. I, 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 I've seen that before. So now, despite her success, Tika has set very clear boundaries about her work-life balance. She says, Sapiro, at this point, she's almost 10, so Aww. she sleeps 20 to 22 hours a day Whoa. when she's not busy modeling. So <laughs> Tika... That's the whole day. Sleeping yeah, beauty, yeah. Tika. Well, Talk needs, about she, sleeping Tika beauty. Tika needs her beauty sleep, <laughs> so she gets 20 to 22 hours of sleep a day, and then models for two hours a day. <laughs> That's Tika's life. That's hilarious. Yeah. Meanwhile, did you hear this? A German hamster is beating the market in cryptocurrency. <laughs> what? Yes. Not crypto. Si yes, in crypto. Since June, a hamster named Mr. Gox has been running an independent... Uh, 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 I guess cryptocurrency portfolio in a high tech cage called the Gox Box. And his portfolio has a wide range of cryptocurrencies, including Tron, Ethereum, and Bitcoin. Now, Mr. Gox's trading sessions are live streamed on Twitch. And what, what happens is the hamster decides what tunnel to run in, and some of the tunnels are by. Some of the tunnels are sell, some tunnels are Bitcoin, some tunnels are Tron, oh, wow. some tunnels are Ethereum, and that will automatically, depending on what tunnel he runs in, it's an automatic sale or purchase of that particular cryptocurrency. Wow. So there's no human <laughs> interaction involved. He's, it, it's really, literally, the cage is set up to actually purchase or sell depending oh. on what he runs through the cape, these little tunnels. Uh, and apparently, Mr. Gox is... How, it, how Mr. Much is he cashing out? I don't know. Mr. Gox is, beat, <laughs> is beaten. He's beating the... Uh, he's beating most people uh, <laughs> after an initial investment of... Uh, it's only 300 euros, uh, which is $390. Mr. Gox has a profit of 54 euros, which is about... A, I guess a 30, 20, 20%, 20 percent uh, return on his money. So it's cute. They're not really risking a lot of money. Right, right, right. right. They're not, I, okay. thought, I, thought, I thought Mr. Gox was, gonna, was making right. millions. No. I thought Mr. When Gox When I was, see crypto, I'm listening. Now, now. <laughs> even if Mr. Gox continues to beat the S&P 500, investing basic, based on a hamster's random movements, uh, this is our public service <laughs> announcement, that is not a sound investment strategy. Yeah, not. Okay. That's not solid although, and I'm not investing. Although <laughs> although I did once have an investment advisor that probably Mr. Gox would have done better <laughs> than, than one of my old investment advisors that I have since fired. Yeah. I think I think Mr. Gox would have beat him out. Yeah. Given the choice. Now you know your options. Given the choice, I think I'd go with Mr. Gox now. <laughs> And in Alaska, it's Fat Bear Week, Vanessa. Fat Bear we, Week. We, we always love Fat Bear Week here <laughs> at Bradshaw Live. It is a healthy competition to figure out who is the fattest bear alive. We've had a similar, we've had a similar um, uh, thing here. It, we call it Fat 
Fat Host Week, Brad wins <laughs> every year. Brad has won that year Thanks. after year after year. <laughs> I am next to two skinny people. <laughs> I can't. I, I Yana always. Yana has only gotten stronger I, I since always, the last time I was in the studio. I always lose. Yikes. I always lose. Fat co-host, <laughs> host of the Brad Week because we won the competition right. the same week as Fat Bear Week in America. Right. That's why I'm here. That's <laughs> right. why I'm here. We all, we all got <laughs> on the scale. We all got on the scale, and, and everyone looked at so me like, lost. and everyone said, "Brad, you lost again." <laughs> oh, we lost. <laughs> oh, I'm the winner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, among this year's contenders, Chunk, one of the most dominant bears on Brooks River, and Holly, a medium large adult female who is 2019's Fat Bear Week champion. Uh, the voting is taking place over several days on explore.org's website. You can also watch bears every day on their live cam. I'm weak. Uh, wow, they really have like a champion. They have a champion fat bear, yes. <laughs> Now, just just a little a little fa hashtag facts about this bears. This looks like fantasy football. Right. <laughs> yes. A little, little hashtag about fat bears. A dominant adult male might catch and eat more than 30 fish a day. And by the end of the fall, adult males can weigh, weigh over 1,000 pounds. Now, last year's fat bear week winner, Bear, is competing <laughs> again this year. He's back in it to Whoa. regain his crown. And he is still considered the bear to beat. Ooh. In September 2020, he weighed an estimated 1,400 pounds. He wow. is really taking in a lot of calories every day. For he, sure. He is taking in a lot of calories every day, that fat bear. <laughs> <laughs> right. How do and they even weigh these guys? Right. How about that? I don't know. I think they just like, they take a guess. I don't no think way. I don't think anyone's going over there with a scale. You can't have a whole fantasy right. football bear thing. And I don't I be guess. Factual. I, I need to make sure that yeah. that's exactly how much they weigh. If that's I'm gonna put my in Japan, a turtle crossing the busy uh, a busy airport runway held up flights, uh, clocking it at over four pounds and one foot long. Uh, this little turtle, or maybe somewhat nice sized turtle. Delayed five flights at Narita International Airport in Tokyo two Fridays ago after being spotted by a pilot just before his plane was scheduled to take off. Air traffic ordered all flights to pause while staff safely captured the turtle and swept the 4,000 meter long runway for any anomalies. A anomalies, excuse me, I can't read. <laughs> Prompting further delay, ironically, planes halted by the wayward turtle included all Nippon Airways Airbus A380 on its way to Okinawa, which happens to be decorated with blue sea turtles as part of a recent campaign to celebrate the airline service to Hawaii. The disturbance turned out to be a welcome one as the airline sent a statement. They said in Hawaii, sea turtles are seen as bringing good luck, and we hope this turtle that came to see the flight off signals a bright future. Have you seen sea turtles? I was in Hawaii. Mm. There's a beach in Hawaii, in Maui, with 30 sea turtles there. And they're just sitting there. They don't care. You can walk up to them. You can pet them. You can uh -huh. say hello to them. You can lie they're next not like to them. They're snapping turtles. No, they're, they're just live turtles. They're just sleeping there on the beach. Uh -huh. They don't care. So right. cute. But they're huge. Like yeah. Like I was gonna yo -yo say they're size. huge, right? Like yo-yo size. They're big Bear turtles. Bear size. Like big, 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 big. Yeah, sea turtles are the ones that don't tuck in there. They yeah. can't. Uh, they're just yeah. like the, yeah, like in Finding they're, Nemo. Right, they were, right. They were kind of cute. Thanks for watching. For more Bradshaw Live, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.